Hello everyone, today we're going to continue our quest to follow up creating a full system for PHP and MySQL based sign up and login system. Um, but also this tutorial is a self-contained tutorial where I'm going to go ahead and talk about form validation in a front end and in the next tutorial we're just going to continue on building our system. So if you haven't watched the first episode, I'm going to put the link in the description. So basically what we did, we created a form uh, that has a login and sign up section. And then we added a little bit of a styling, obviously, in CSS and went ahead and created a script where uh, we have this interaction where switching between the forms basically have this kind of effect. So now let's go ahead and talk about form validation in front end. The way we're going to handle this, we're going to use HTML5 form validation. So today's tutorial is going to be about that. So the way HTML5 validation works is that if I want to go through the markup that we created, we have a login section and we have a sign up section. So the login is within the, you know, div with the ID login and sign up is within the div with ID sign up and within that we pretty much have three divs uh, each of which contains the username password and a remember me right so to be able to enable the HTML5 form validation we need to get the fields that we have including the button here I'm just gonna cut it and create a form I'm going to remove the action because we're not going to use it in front end and I'm going to paste the same within the form. So now everything we have right now is within the form element, including username, password, remember me, and sign up. So if I change the type of the button to submit, what you're going to see is that now that I start clicking on this, it starts refreshing the page, meaning that it tries to submit the form, right? So now, Using HTML5 form validation, let's say we want to make the username and password required. So it's as easy as go, going ahead and just add an attribute called required to the username, right? And now when you start clicking on login, you'll see that it actually says, please fill in this form. The same we can do with the password. So if I say required, it's going to well, let's enter this one. Now, if I press login, it's going to say, please fill in this form. So, so far, so good. Um, the next thing we can do, if we want to style the fields or the input fields that we want to be uh, validated, what we can do is in CSS, here we have uh, the classes for styling these two inputs, right? Input with type text and input with type password, right? So, what we can do, I'm just going to copy this, uh, paste it over here, and we can assign two pseudo classes to this, like invalid and invalid for this one as well. Uh, and what am I going to do is maybe just changing the border color to be red, right? So now you can see that right away the border color for password becomes red and if I go ahead and you know remove this it's going to be the same thing so initially because the user hasn't entered any values this will be the border color basically these inputs will be in invalid state right and we can also have a valid state so I'm just going to copy this paste it here and change these to valid and maybe give the back border color to be green right so now this, as soon as I start typing, you will see that we get a border over here, which is green, basically changing this to become valid. There are some other attributes that you can add, like max length, win, uh, max length, min length. Uh, maybe you want to have like an input that accepts emails and then um, you don't need to add any attribute, just uh, select the type email on that and that would be validated. So this is how we can easily 
make sure that uh, we have some sort of front-end validation on our form. But now there are a couple of questions that arise, right? First and foremost, what if we want to show some custom error messages, right? So right now, if we submit the form, the first thing you're going to see is please fill in this field. What if we don't want to have it like this? What if we don't want to have this style like this? The second bad thing about this implementation is that this is based on the locale of your browser. So say, you know, the locale of your browser is a non-English uh, locale, and then the site that you present is actually in English. So you're going to get an error that is not in English right so that is something that you want to avoid as well so the second thing that uh, you might actually question is that why the inputs even before logging in the first time the user comes and sees this form even without that these are red obviously it kind of makes sense because it kind of shows that these fields are required but you might not want to have these functionality right so how are we going to manage this there is no way we can customize it so that uh, in HTML and CSS only we can achieve the effect that we want. We have to use JavaScript, right? And for that, HTML5 has a very nice API called Constraint API. Now, let's go ahead and change these uh, pseudo classes, invalid and invalid. I'm just going to remove them and just say dot error. So whenever the input has class error and also for the password the same way right as easy as that but now we still have this you know when you log in when the input is not filled it's gonna still say please fill in this field what we can do in the HTML we can go on the form and add an attribute called no validate right so now if I go ahead and log in, you see that the page starts refreshing, meaning that the form will not validate and it will try to submit. Well, obviously, we don't have any action, just starts uh, sort of signing, uh, basically starts refreshing. So what we want to do is, since we have this form, and this is for the login form, I'm just going to give it a class login form. Now in my JavaScript, I'm going to go here and say, okay, my login form, it's document query selector, and then the class login form. So this is how I reference the form. And then I'm just gonna say login form, add event listener, submit, and then I will pass a function as the second parameter. Now the first thing, and I'm going to pass the event object that gets passed to it when you click on this, right? Uh, so I'm just going to prevent default, right? Which means that now if I start log uh, basically clicking on login, you see the page doesn't refresh. It means that it stops the or it prevents the form to be submitted, right? But now the problem is that uh, we want to make sure that it will submit when we have the form valid. And now the only constraint we have on username and password is that both of them should be required. So how are we going to do that? It's actually pretty easy. I'm going to say if, so we have to first have a reference to these inputs in our JavaScript, which we don't have here. So I'm going back to HTML, the input for the username where within the login section, I'm just going to give it an ID you can give it a class as well, but I'm just going to give it an ID, call it login username. And for the same thing, I'm just going to say ID login password, right? In my JavaScript, I'm going to basically copy this, paste it over here. I'm just going to call it login username. And I know that the uh, reference should be of ID login username. And I'm going to create the login password as well. So login password and then login password. Um, if I write it correctly, password, right? So now it's going to be as easy. Let's take the username for, for example. I'm just going to do login username validity dot valid. So if login username dot validity valid, 
actually opposite of that so I'm just gonna put bang here so if not login username validity valid meaning that if the this login input username input is not valid I want to prevent the default which it is right it is not valid so if I press login right now you'll see that nothing happens the next thing I want to do is making sure that I add if you remember in CSS we created these error classes right so I want to add this error class to that input how can I do it here I'll just say login username dot class list dot add and then error right so if I start clicking on this you'll see that we're gonna have red border meaning that this username now is invalid so now we kind of deal with uh, we kind of dealt with that situation where the user comes in this is the first moment or first uh, sort of visit of the page and they're not going to see anything but that's the any error but the moment they press login they realize that this field needs to be filled in right the same thing can go with the password so i can say if login and come here and do the same thing with the login password right and I'm just going to say login password class list add error. Now, if I press login, you will see that both inputs will become um, red. So, uh, so far, so good. Now, how are we going to validate these? I'm just going to type something and type here something else. Now, if I log in, you will see that it refreshes. It means that it submits because our inputs were actually correct. So the way we're going to do it, we need to add event listener for the login username dot add event listener. And that would be input. And then I will pass a function. And here I will check for the validity of the login username again. So I'm just going to say if login username dot validity dot valid. So if it actually valid, I'm just going to remove the class error that I added here. So I'm going to say username, login username dot class list dot remove error. Right. And the same thing I can do with the password. So I'm just going to copy that, paste it and say login password, add event listener input, meaning that it gets values over here. I'm just going to say login password, validity valid. And I'm just going to say login password class list remove error. So initially, what we're going to have is that if I press this, we, the user will realize that these two fields are invalid. But now the moment I start typing, you will see that the state of that becomes valid. And since in CSS, we have the valid pseudo classes over here, right? The border color will become green, meaning that the user knows that now this field is valid and the same goes with the password and then you can go ahead and log in and basically checking from the back end saving and see basically seeing if the user exists and the username and password are correct and do something accordingly whether showing an admin page or something else and so forth so you could see how easy it is to kind of validate that everything works uh, the next thing we want to do is actually showing some sort of a custom error. How am I going to do that? First and foremost, you can see that the space between the password label over here and the username is quite tight, right? So let's go ahead in the HTML and see how do we have this. So basically, any div within the form with the class login form uh, contains these elements that we have over here. So here, if I go ahead in this and say for a login form, and then the first div that we have, since in the HTML, each of these divs that contain these fields are the first, in the first level, direct children of the form, I'm gonna use this and then say, margin top let's say 40 pixel so now you can see that there is pretty much a good space 
between this password and also here where we can actually show an error message right so what am I going to do is I'm going to in my HTML underneath the input I'm just going to create a div called error and for now I'm just going to say please enter your username right so we have this and we're going to have the same div for the password. So please enter your password, right? Now we have these error classes. I'm just going to say MSG error and also MSG error. Here in my CSS uh, somewhere, I'm going to say MSG error. I'm just going to give you the color red. So you can see that this will be the color and it will say please enter your username and please enter your password, right? But initially we want to make sure that these visibility of these are none. So I can easily say display none over here. And then I can say MSG error and then show. So the class show, which I'm going to add using JavaScript, I'm going to change the display to be block, right? So initially the display is none, and then I want to make it display block. So now in our JavaScript, when we are submitting the form, if any of these are invalid, I want to basically show the error message. So I know for fact that here in my HTML, the error message is the uh, basically the sibling after my login username. So here, when I get this, I can easily say login username, next element sibling, and then I can say class list dot add show. Right? The same thing I can do with the login password. Right? So if the login password is not valid, please go ahead and add the class show to the next sibling of the login password. So now if I press login, you will see that we not only get the username, but also we get the password error over here. So we not only have the border red, but also we have some sort of a customized text uh, that we can show to the user. Now if the user goes ahead and basically fill in, we want to do the same thing. We want to get this in the login username input. If the login username is valid, we not only want to remove the error class from the input, we also want to make sure that we remove this show class for the, from the next sibling, which is the error message over here, right? And we're going to do the same thing for the login password, right? So now if I start typing, if I just press login, you're going to see that we get the errors, but also if I start typing, you will see that that error goes away and the same thing over here. Well, basically this should be removed. So now it's going to play nicely. So now let's say you start typing, you know, username, but you don't press password. If you start logging, we're going to only see that the validation happens for the password. All right, so I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you have any questions and concerns, go ahead and put it in the comment section. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, please go ahead and do. We're going to have everyday super cool tutorials that you will learn at least something from it. Uh, and at least I hope you learned something from it. Please go ahead and like and share this tutorial if you liked it. Uh, in the next tutorial, we're going to continue our PHP development. We're going to utilize these yeah, sort of uh, validation in our form. And then we go ahead and wrap up the uh, full backend system that we have for the login and sign up. Wish you a great day and night and see you next time. Goodbye.